In this video I'll show you how I created and animated this crazy ice cream cone, slurping its own melting ice. Hi guys, my name is Manuel. I promised I wasn't drunk when I came up with the idea. Maybe a little dehydrated from the heat here at the moment though. Alright, let's jump right in. There are three main elements, which are the cone, the melting ice cream and the background. So let's start with creating the cone. We create a new comp, use the rectangle tool to create the simple square shape. Stroke width 8 pixels. Color some kind of mm, fresh mint. We use a linear gradient as fill, the colors, a nice yellow, a second color, a blue. We switch to the selection tool and change the direction of the gradient. Having in mind, the light comes from the top left corner. We duplicate the solid and add Venetian blinds. Transition completion 65%, direction 50 degrees, width 30. No stroke. The fill a single color. which is a dark blue. We duplicate the solid again, set the direction to 130 degrees. And now we got this typical ice cream cone pattern. We choose a brighter color this time, mm, a bright mint maybe. We duplicate it again. <laughs> I guess you already can see where this is going. Change the direction. I've used four layers with Venetian blinds all together, two going in each direction. And then I pre-composed the ice cream cone to be able to add some roundness and depth to the shape. Using CC Cylinder, I slightly reduced the radius and adjusted the light settings, changed the light height and the direction to get this really nice light streak here. The scoops are simple round shapes with gradient fills. For some texture, I love to add noise. Quite a bit. Alright, to add more detail, I added a layer style. In this case, bevel and emboss. And adjusted some settings. Increased the size, softened it, changed the angle and the altitude. And of course, the shadow and highlight colors. The scoop colors kind of contrast the cone colors, but they still are related and don't fall apart completely, which I think is important. The drops are done the same way. It's simple path shapes. After creating all the scoops, drops, I pre-compose the comp again, to be able to bend the whole thing all together. Therefore, I added CC Bandit. You need to set the start point below, the end point above, and you want to take care that nothing is cut off. Then you simply set a keyframe for bend, and then bend it over to the right side. 12. Then it swings back, of course. Not as far though. So that's minus 8. Back and forth, slowing down even more. 6. Slowly coming to a standstill. Minus 3. Then 1. And finally 0 again. Then we add easy ease in to all keyframes. <laughs> You're probably wondering. Yes, the ice cream is moving separately. I added some secondary motion. And how did I do that? Let's go back into the pre-comp. Here are all the keyframes. I added markers where the bent keyframes in the main comp are. And offset by two frames, I animated all the path shapes. Let's check it out here. So this is the final frame, the end state. And before that, it just moves along. Let me know in the comments below if you like more animation process videos like this one. Of course, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like. It helps the channel a lot. Thanks very much, guys. Alright, let's take a look at the eyes. 
so ice. I quickly show you how I did that. It's basically an ellipse shape with a white fill, no stroke. Then I converted the shape into a BC path and got rid of the round corners, left and right. To make it look more like an eye. Eye. <laughs> then I added a second shape, round shape this time. Color dark blue, which is the pupil of the eye. And to actually copy it or duplicate it, I added CC Rapid Tile. Expanded it to the right, and the tiling is Checker Flip H. <laughs> Anyways, the problem is the distance is like far too narrow between the eyes. So, what I came up with is that a little quick and dirty solution is simply adding another shape and making it transparent. So you can control the distance between the two eyes by reducing or increasing the size of the shape. You have to adjust the expand property, but that's it. And now it's easy to animate the pupil, following the drop moving downwards. So the background basically consists of some gradients. Then there are the light rays. And there's a matte layer which actually cuts out the shade, which is here. I've added set matte effects to the light rays and chose the matte layer for the light rays to spare the shade. And on top, I've added a tiny bit of Gaussian blur and some extra noise, like 20%. And I've added posterized time and reduced the frame rate to 12 frames per second to give it more like a handmade feel. And the drops around the mouth are simple small paths I animated with a few keyframes. <laughs> so that's basically it. I hope there's some stuff you find useful for your next animation. Is there stuff you would have done differently? I'm curious, let me know in the comments below. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell to get notified when my next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video. Bye.